Welcome participants. Now we are moving to lecture number 3 in week 10. In this particular lecture, I have chosen the topic to discuss more about double bar warp net construction. So, double bar means you are using two different guide bar for making the warp net structure. Just a quick recap of single guide bar structure in the last class we talked about three categories of single bar construction where single guide bar was used. First was pillar where there was no connections between the whales. So, pillar was usually the fabric is created with the help of weft inlays or sometimes pillar are used in double bar constructions to give support. The second structure is tricot, where which is the most simple one and widely used structure in warp knitted category. Tricot as a single bar structure, here you can have the guide bar shifting from one needle to its alternate column or alternate needle or sometimes the, the guide bar will be shifting from one needle to second needle, third needle or fourth needle depending on the construction. So, in tricot category we talked about one cross one tricot, we talked about two cross one tricot, three cross one type tricot, four cross one tricot. So, in tricot the overlap will always be one, but underlap can keep on changing. So, you are basically changing the floating length. This is also very, very popular in single bar construction. The third categories of single bar construction was atlas. So, in atlas we have seen how the combination of closed loop and open loop were produced in the same structure. So, this all categories of single bar constructions can also be used in double bar constructions. So, you can have two guide bar, one can be set as a pillar or another can be set as a tricot construction. So, when you come, once you combine any these two, then it will become a double bar construction. So, we will see some examples of how you can combine pillar and tricot and create a composite fabric of these two construction. Similarly, you can combine atlas or pillar atlas or tricot. So, the combinations you can see is infinite and in two bar constructions there are lot of possibilities are there. In literatures you can also find five bar construction, six bar construction, eight bar construction. So, the depending on the technology's capability of your machine you can go for different design of the fabric. What is another important thing which we covered in the last week was closed loop and open loop. So, in closed and open loop construction we have seen how the direction of overlap and underlap can be changed and we can get different types of fabric structure. For example, if you see closed loop construction, so in the same course the direction of overlap is 1 to 0 and direction of underlap is from 0 to 2. Okay, so, which is in opposite direction. Similarly, in open categories the direction of overlap is 0 to 1 and underlap is also in the same direction which is 1 to 3. So, in this way closed construction and open constructions are different. In this if you carefully see both the overlap and underlap has same amount, overlap is 1 pitch and underlap is 2 pitch. So, in both the construction the amount of overlap is same amount of underlap is same, but the only difference here is they are in opposite direction. So, once you have different opposite direction the nature of loop in the fabric will be different, especially the open loop construction is uh, highly unstable, distorted, the fabric is more wider, the GSM is lower. So, there are lot of properties can be altered only by changing the direction of overlap and underlap in the same course. So, this is what we covered in the last classes and uh, we mainly focused on single bar construction. 
Now let's move to double bar warp net construction. So first of all, what do you mean by double bar construction? So in double bar construction, each needle will get chance to interact with two guides and each individual guides will be connected to different bars. So for example, if you see this guide is connected with bar 1, so this is the bar and the second guide is connected with different bar. So you can think for the plan for bar 1 as a tricot or atlas or pillar. Similarly, for bar 2, you can think for any combination for guide movement. So, in this way, the two combination of guides movement are combined together and a different type of fabric structure can be generated. So, as a two bar construction or multi bar construction, you need to give the lapping diagram and plan for two different guides. So, for each guide you need to draw the lapping diagram, for each guide you need to draw the lapping plan. So, this is the only difference in single bar and double bar construction. When you have 6 bar construction, bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, bar 4, bar 6, in that case you need to provide lapping plan for all the 6 bars and also lapping diagram for all the 6 bars. So, in today's uh, lecture, we are going to focus mainly on double bar constructions where we are focusing on two bars. So, if you understand two bars, three bar and four bar is just the generalization of the principles used in two bar construction. So, here I am giving a just a quick example of two bar constructions. So, the blue one, uh, if you see the left lapping diagram. So, the blue one is having different lapping plan and the red one which is the guide bar 2 has different amount of lapping movement during course, course formation. So, definitely these two guides must be attached with different guide bars. So, we need to provide the movement of both the guide bars uh, as a separate column. If you see the second photo, they look similar to the, the first one. But the only difference here is we have altered the position of 1 to 2 and 2 to 1. So, we have swapped the position. So, here the 2 become 1. So, here the red was uh, red was denoted by second guide bar. Here the blue is denoted by first guide bar. So, the only difference is we have shifted the position of guides with respect to needle. So, it means what was initially set to bar 1 movement, now the bar 1 movement is changed to bar 2 movement and bar 2 movement is changed to bar 1 movement. So, obviously, when you change the relative position of these bars, obviously, you will get a different types of structures. So, even though the lapping plan of these two bars are same, but relative positioning with respect to the needle will also play important role here. So, let me, let me explain you how when you change the position of bar 1 and bar 2, how the fabric will change. So, uh, first of all, um, here is the two technologies which is uh, quite popular in two bar machines. So, first one is tricot machines, widely popular uh, for agro nets, for simple mesh fabric, for mosquito net fabric. So, single bed machines are very, very popular and this is this machine I also demonstrated in week number 8, how we fix sinker, how we fix uh, uh, bar, how we fix needle, everything uh, was uh, shown to you as a lab demonstration. So, in tricot machine also you can see if you see the video carefully, there are two guides. So, one is uh, this one and another one is at the back side and this is the needle which is rising. So, so, you can see it here. So, this is the needle and there are two guides which is attached on the top. So, one is visible. So, the bar 1 is visible to you, bar 2 is at the back side of this bar. Okay. Similarly, on the rational machine also, rational machine also the role of sinker is not that prominent because there is a um, verge on the needle bed itself. So, the pulling of fabric is very, very easy. So, in rational knitting machine also we can have two guide bar. Uh, which will be providing yarn to the individual needles. 
Okay. So, uh, the positioning of two guides is very, very important because it will decide which yarn is actually being interacted by the needle first. So, usually we have the front guide bar and back guide bar which is uh, presented to the needle. So, we define front guide bar as the guide bar which uh, connects or which is nearest to the needle that is called front guide bar. The second one is the back guide bar which is fastest from the needle. So, F and B are denoted as per the relative positioning of those guides in the front side of the needle. So, those who is very knee next to the needle that is attached with the front guide bar and those who is fastest to the needle it is called back guide bar. We can also name this guide bar 1 or guide bar 2. So, if you see here why this position is very, very important because once the guide bar swings from front side to back side naturally the yarn which is attached to back guide bar will come on the top of the surface when you are looking the fabric on technical back side. So, on the technical back side the yarn which is attached with tech with the guide bar B or the back guide bar that will be visible to the user. So, you can see it here. So, depending on which yarn or which color you are attaching with individual guide bar that will decide how the fabric will look on the surface. So, if the yarn is attached with the back guide bar that will come on the back side of the fabric and those which is connected with front guide bar that will come on the technical front side of the fabric. So, it is similar to weft knitted constructions where we have the technical front and technical back. So, here the technical back side the guide bar which is technical back those yarns will be visible on technical front side of the fabric yarn which is attached with the technical front side or front guide bar will be visible and this is shown in the needle also. So, you can see the technical face side yarn from front guide bar is visible on technical back side yarn from back guide bar is visible and front and back we denote with respect to the needle position. So, those which is very next to the needle is called front those which is fastest from the needle is called back on the front side, but on the on the opposite side if you see on the back side the back guide bar is very near to the needle and front guide bar is very far to the needle. So, obviously, the denotation of front and back is defined with respect to the front side not at the back side and positioning of yarn on individual guides will change the appearance of the fabric. So, although overlap and underlap variations are important, but positioning of these guide bars is also important with respect to needle. Now, let us see some of the combination of the fabric which can be generated. So, if you see here there are uh, two guide bars which is providing the yarn to individual needle. So, first one is actually uh, front guide bar is making pillar construction. So, I already explained you different types of pillar construction in the previous lecture and back guide bar is making one cross one tricot. So, uh, this is the one of the simple two bar constructions where you are combining tricot and pillar together. So, uh, if you see another constructions here also two bar construction front guide bar is making one cross one tricot and back guide bar is doing just underlap. So, it is just shifting the position not giving um, yarn to the needle. So, that is also possible um, in the fabric construction. Uh, other complicated constructions could be. So, here is the lapping plan for two bar constructions where you can get mess different types of messes and these messes is very, very important because that will decide the size of the pores. Uh, so, for mosquito um, fabric development also size is very, very important. If you go for um, tissue engineering where you have to develop cell 
on the surface there also pore size is very very important and you can change the dimensions of pores depending on the lapping plan of two different bars. So, I have some fabric with me. So, I am going to explain for one or two two bar constructions how they are designed and what was the lapping plan and diagram for individual guides. So, that will be sufficient for you to at least guess how a double bar construction is defined or generated. So, let me show you the first construction. So, this is your first construction. So, if you carefully see the fabric, the, the similar fabric is if you want to see the color mode, uh, this is the fabric. So, if you see this type of fabric, so one is made from the black yarn, which if, you, if I zoom it more for you. So, one is made from the black yarn and the other is the green yarn, which is traveling. So, definitely if you see the column, which is created by the black yarn is nothing but the pillar construction, because the pillar, it is moving in one direction, it is not connecting with adjacent columns of pillar. So, uh, definitely this two bar fabric is having one pillar and the other combination is the, the green yarn, which is actually combining these two pillars and placing them in the right position in the fabric. Similarly, in the white um, fabric, uh, both the yarns are same. So, uh, it is very difficult to differentiate, but the same construction and here you can um, able to understand more closely. So, let me explain for you. So, you can see the construction here. So, this is the construction and the pillar, if you start pulling it, this is a open loop pillar construction. If you start pulling it, it is just coming out from the fabric, which is not the case with closed loop pillar. So, if you want to see the difference between closed loop pillar and open loop pillar, you can see it here. The pillar loops in the pillar is coming out. So, all the loops which is being formed in the pillar is just coming out because it is a open loop construction. So, so the middle one, so this this one. So, let me let me zoom for you. Okay. So, this is the pill loops. So, this is the pillar loops. So, you can see it here. So, it is just coming out. So, that is the problem with open loop construction. Okay. And on the side, you can see there is a another guide bar, which is actually connecting two pillars. Okay. So, which is connecting two pillars together. So, in simple terms, if you want to express this fabric, so, so, if you want to express this fabric, the, the first guide bar is actually making pillar in open loop construction. Okay. This is the open loop construction. And the other guide bar is actually just providing yarn to two columns, only doing underlap. So, this is what is happening exactly in this fabric. Okay. So, the first guide bar, which is the front guide bar, is making the pillar, and back guide bar is actually make, making a, the only underlaps. So, the first guide bar, bar 1, which is the front one, it is actually making pillar. Okay. So, so, you can note down the lapping plan for the pillar construction. This is 1 to 0, then 0 to 0, because there is no underlap and then 0 to 1. So, this is the for 
pillar construction open loop. So, 1 to 0, 0 to 0 is the underlap and then 0 to 1. So, this is what is denoted here and this bar 1 which is a next very ne next to the needle is attached with the, the yarn is attached with the front bar. Then there is second bar 2 which is just giving the underlaps. Okay. So, that is also only underlap. So, if you recollect the lecture number 1, it is the combination of two different types of overlap and underlap variations by using two bars. So, here if you see 3 to 3, 3 to 3 is the overlap, after that 3 to 1 is the underlap then 1 to 1 is again overlap and then it is moving back to third position. So, this is how two bars are connected together. So, 3 to 3, 1 to 1. If you see second construction which looks like slightly mesh type fabric, if you see this is a kind of mesh which has been created. If you want to see the construction for this fabric, the lapping plan for back bar which is 2 and front bar which is number 1 is like this because that it is very difficult to um, observe even in microscope. So, once you are developing this fabric and the way you design the pattern drum and pattern disc which I will be covering in the next class, um, based on that I am just explaining what is the lapping plan for this particular fabric. So, this particular fabric is having the lapping plan of 0 to 1, then 1 to 1, then 1 to 0 then 0 to 2, then 2 to 1, then 1 to 1, then 2, then. So, this is after that it is repeating. So, this is the lapping plan for back guide bar. For lapping plan for front guide bar is 1 to 1, 2 to 2, then 3 to 3, then 2 to 2, then 1 to 1 and after that it reach back to its original position. So, basically up to here, after that it is repeating. So, this is for back guide bar and front guide bar. If you want to draw the lapping diagram, Three, four. So, 0 to 1 on the front side, 1 to 1 is this, this one and then from 1 to 0 again on the front side and then 0 to 2. So, this is the second position, this is the second position 0 to 2 and then from 2 to 1 on the front side this is the overlap and then 1 to 1 um, is again underlap is 0, then 1 to 1 to 2. So, after this 1 to 2 and after 2 then this is 0. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. After 4 courses, we started from here, we reached here and this is the lapping diagram for back bar 2. Now, let us see the lapping diagram for front bar. So, for front bar, you have 1 cross 1. So, I am using the different color so that you can differentiate. So, 1 to 1 is overlap, so overlap is nothing. 
after that 1 to 2 this is the underlap 1 to 2 and after that 2 to 3 2 to 2 is 2 to 2 is again overlap which is nothing just swinging after that then this is 3 2 to 3 this is underlap from 3 to 3 is again nothing then 3 to 2 is underlap then 2 to 2 swinging then after 2 to 2 this is 2 to 1 overlap so we started from here we finished here for the next course so this is how it is happening so the front guide bar is just doing underlaps and back bar is basically a atlas construction because it has open as well as closed loop so this is closed loop and this is open loop so this is how this particular fabric is created so this particular fabric is basically created using this so there are different types of fabrics are there some fabrics you can easily observe with the help of microscope and some fabrics are very very complicated so you cannot actually guess how the fabric will look uh, it is very very difficult from engineering point of view to guess the design of the fabric before making it so there are a lot of hit and trials you have to do it you need to understand how the uh, sinker loops is actually pulling the loops and how the mesh can be created so this is a hexagonal mesh which can be created if you follow the lapping plan according to this particular lapping diagram so obviously you will get this fabric so in 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 literature there are so many examples are given so i just expect you to keep following different types of uh, examples and try to understand double bar construction so with this uh, we are finishing the warp knitting structural design possibilities in the next class i will take you to the lab where how we actually make or change the lapping plan on the machine so that you can create different types of structures so for for this particular week i expect all of you to please do as many practice try to understand warp knitted structure i can understand the structure is very very complicated but a lot of practice and experience has to come and uh, you need to keep doing a number of practices so in the in the quizzes also i will incorporate many types of questions where you can make the practice and try to be comfortable with this type of topic so from next class uh, we will be discussing more uh, of technology related thing and the machine on the machine how we actually design these fabrics so with this thank you very much uh, see you soon in the next week thank you